Hi, I'm the Red Shirt Lady, and today I'm going to make a pie crust for you that's easy to roll out. It doesn't fall apart when you're trying to put it in the pan. And the reason is uh, two things. One, because of the proportion of the ingredients, and two, because you freeze it into balls, and, in, and you take them out as you need them, and the freezing process somehow helps it roll out easier. Uh, so I'm going to start making it. I'm making it in a big roaster because this makes 20 pie crusts. Don't let that intimidate you. It's very easy. It takes one bag of all-purpose flour, five-pound bag. I use unbleached. I'm going to put part of it in here just to show you. And it takes three pounds of shortening, but I use butter and oil instead because shortening is horrible for you. So I am going to show you some different ways that you can cut that butter in. You can use a pastry blender. You want to get it to the size of peas. You can use two knives like this, cut it up, and it needs to be cold butter until it gets down to that size. Or, as you can tell, that would be pretty time consuming. So what I do is put it through my food processor with the grater. You can put a stick at a time in here. Just going to show you the one stick. It's going to be grated like this. Put that in there. And if you can see in here, we want to make sure that all those pieces get coated in flour and that they're not sticking together. Much easier than trying to cut it in by hand. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the sticks butter. Okay, I have now incorporated all eight sticks of butter, which is two pounds, into this flour. And it has to be really cold butter. You can't handle it too much if you're going to do the food processor method. So I want you to see in the flour how there are no big lumps. And we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients, which is two tablespoons of salt. Mix that in just a little bit first. And then two cups of oil. And three cups of cold water. And then I just want to mix that all up. And the reason that, another reason besides uh, shortening not being good for you, that I use butter and oil. I tried using three pounds of butter as opposed to three pounds of shortening. And it's good and it works, but sometimes the bottom of the pan, uh, the crust will burn a little bit if the pie's in there, you know, close to the time that the inside is done and butter burns easier than oil so I add a little oil to kind of temper it out. So this is what it looks like when it's pretty well mixed. I want to make about 20 so I'm going to kind of divide this down the middle so I can picture what 10 and 10 are going to be. Here's 5, here's 5 and I'm just going to start making my balls of dough. It's really for me just kind of a good handful and it may not come out to exactly 20, it doesn't matter. Put that together, don't handle it too much, and then put it on a piece of cellophane. And we're going to wrap it in two layers so that you can keep it a long time in your freezer if you wanted to. You don't want it to be directly on foil, so the cellophane protects from that, but the foil keeps it from being freezer burned. So put each one on a piece of cellophane, wrap that, and then wrap it in foil. Normally I have 20 of these laid out everywhere, but I'm just showing you for practical purposes. And we're going to pop these in the freezer and tomorrow I will get one out, thaw it, and show you how easy it is to roll out to a pie crust. Okay, now I have thawed my crust and I'm going to show you how easy it is to roll out. And the nice thing about this is that it has enough butter and oil in it that you can use a lot of flour in rolling it out and not worry about it falling apart. So actually, we don't want to knead but we want to get enough flour in there so that it's workable and not too sticky. So just a few times like this. Then we're going to start rolling it out. You'll notice I have plenty of flour on the table. So best way to make a circle is to go from the inside out, inside out, at different directions. 
and I always add flour as I go, flip it, make sure both sides have plenty. And you want to just do it until it's at least as big as the pie plate with some hanging over. I'm going to do it a little bit more because I think I have enough thickness here that I can make a good edge on my crust if I do it a little bit more. Okay, now we want to brush as much of that flour off so that it doesn't burn on the bottom. See how easy that's going to come up. I'm not as worried about how much flour is on the inside because that will mix in with the filling and actually help thicken it. So I'm just going to kind of pat it. I'll lay this over my pie plate. Let the middle sink in. And there's um, two ways you can make the edge, but you want to go ahead for either way first and, and tuck in the overhanging parts so that you sort of have a double thickness. If it's really long, then you want to trim some off. Say over here, this is getting kind of long. We don't want to big, have a big chunk of crust there. But generally speaking, we're going to turn that under. And if one side's a little short, you can just take this and patch it to another side. Like working with clay. Okay, now an easy way is just to take a fork and go along the edge. Make your design like this. But I think it's prettier if you do this pattern. Stick your finger in, one finger in to push it out, take the other two and pinch that to a point. Okay. Then go the opposite way. Stick this finger in, pinch, 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 all the way around. There's lots of ways to do this. Doesn't have to be any certain way. Okay, now if this were a pie that would require, require a pudding filling, then you need to pre-bake the crust for 10 minutes. Uh, in that case, you would need to poke it so that it doesn't bubble up in the middle with your, with your fork. If this were a pumpkin pie, however, then you would not put those holes in there. You'd leave it plain pour your filling in, and then you really need to cover the crust so that it doesn't get too dark before the filling gets done. So what I do is I just take, say this is the foil I had my uh, crust wrapped it up in before I baked it, I put it in the freezer, I cut it into three strips. I'm just going to take each of those, mold them around the edge to save foil, never hurts. And if you have one of those nifty little crust covers, that's great too. I have one, but this is what I always used before I had one. And now it's ready to go in the oven.